Hello friends, it's Dave here from Savedex, here to bring you another Nintendo Switch review. This time I'm taking a look at Palindrome Syndrome Escape Room. A review copy was very kindly provided by MC2 Games, thank you very much for that. But before we take a look at it, if you enjoy these videos and want to see more, then feel free to click that subscribe button below to join our party, and we also have a link to our Discord where we have a very active and welcoming community. So. Let's take a look at Palindrome Syndrome. So what is this game? Well, as the title suggests, it's a virtual escape room game. You wake up on a space station with no memory and you explore this area, solving puzzles in order to progress. If you've ever done an escape room before, then you will know what to expect. If not, then I shall explain. The rooms are filled with puzzles, but you are given little explanation as to how to solve each one, and you need to explore your surroundings to find hints to work out what to do with each one. If you saw our review of In Rays of the Light, then you may remember that I hated the vagueness of it and randomly searching around for an obscure solution, but that does not mean that I hate this sort of game, because this game I feel does it much better. While In Rays of the Light gave you a giant area to explore, that it felt like a drag to find your way around, Palindrome Syndrome is made up of multiple rooms, and when you enter a new room, everything you need is inside that one room, so you won't need to spend ages wandering around aimlessly. The one thing I would love to praise this game for is the puzzles themselves. I will be showing off plenty of them in this review without showing any solutions, Annoyingly, my computer froze without me noticing when I first played this game, so the footage didn't record. So, re-recording it was kind of awkward as I already knew the solutions to the puzzles, but I did them in a hesitant way so the footage you see doesn't just show me instantly solving them. The first puzzle you will come across is this padlock, with a combination, and to work it out, you have this list of numbers next to it. I won't tell you the answer, but you need to work out what has gone on with the other numbers on that list to see what the combination becomes. I managed to work out plenty of the puzzles this way, and it always felt satisfying. The clues aren't always right next to the puzzle though, sometimes you need to explore for it, but thankfully any clues you need are in the same room as the puzzle, so you don't need to look far. As far as I know anyway. In the second room there are these switches that need to be moved in a certain pattern. There is something on the wall that indicates the pattern, so that's all well and good, but then I came across a four digit passcode, and I could not find anywhere a hint as to what it could be, so I ended up just guessing every possible combination until I got it right. Sadly, there were a few moments in this game where I had to resort to tactics like this, but they were few and far between. The majority of the puzzles were hinted at just enough that I was able to work it out without it being too obvious or too obscure. These sorts of puzzles are not for everyone, but I really do enjoy the odd noodle scratcher. So for the puzzles and the overall atmosphere of the game, they really did a great job for the most part, but there were sadly a few issues that let this game down for me, and that's mainly with the controls. Bear in mind I am reviewing the Nintendo Switch version, and this game was previously released on Steam, and I have not played it on Steam, but I feel it's probably more suited there. You use the left stick to move and the right stick to look around. A is to interact and B is to deselect things. X and Y are to bring up your diary entries and inventory, you can also hold L to run. When using the right stick to look around, an icon appears on items that can be interacted with. But in order for it to be selected, the small dot in the centre of the screen needs to be over it. It's not enough that you're near the object and the icon has appeared, you need to be precisely looking at it, and the controls with the sticks are not responsive enough for this to be comfortable. When you have selected an item or on a menu, then you use the right stick to now move a cursor around, and it moves too slowly for my liking, and it did get frustrating when trying to interact with things with the cursor as well, due to how precise you needed to be, and sometimes it just did not want to highlight it. 
I have watched footage of the PC version of this game and it looks like the cursor moves a lot smoother there, but having not played it I don't know for sure how it controls. One thing that could have rectified this would be if touchscreen controls were implemented, but sadly the touchscreen cannot be used in this game. This would have made for a nice quality of life feature in the game when playing in handheld, as it would have streamlined certain areas, such as this chess puzzle. Here, you need to place three black chess pieces on the board, and you are given a list of clues to help you work out where they go. These clues aren't displayed while manipulating the chess pieces, so in order to remind yourself of them, you need to exit the board, bring up the menu, move the cursor to select the instructions and then read them, and then exit back out and select the board again and hope that you don't forget them in the time it takes to load it up again. So I do recommend having something to take notes on for these bits. It also seemed to have some performance issues. As I ran around the space station, the game seemed to struggle to keep up. I don't tend to notice things like this, but it was distracting here. But outside of that, the game looked good and presented a mysterious atmosphere as you work out what's going on and you have this spooky voice to talk to you every now and then. You promised you would take care of her. Margaret, where are you? The game costs £8.99, €9.99 or $9.99 and I managed to beat this game in just a few hours. And as is the case with games like this, once you've beaten it, then you probably wouldn't want to go through it again as you'll know all of the solutions. This is a tricky one to say if I would recommend it, as I did enjoy the puzzles on this game and thought they were crafted well. I had a great time solving them. There was enough mystery and hints to get me invested, but nothing was so obscure that I got frustrated and needed to consult a guide. Except for the couple of times I needed to guess my way to the right answer. So the game and the puzzles itself is good, I really enjoyed solving them, but I really didn't like how this game handled. Using the cursor was frustrating and unresponsive at times, and made simpler tasks more faffy than they needed to be. With the implementation of touchscreen controls and being able to bring up your hints instantly, this would have been a fantastic little title and a great way to test your brain for a couple of hours, but given how it controls, I don't think I could recommend it on the Switch. Like I said, I've seen PC footage of this and it seems to move the cursor a lot easier, so I would recommend taking a look at this game on Steam as there really is a great escape room with clever puzzles hidden in here. If you really enjoy these escape room type games, then this is worth checking out on a sale I'd say. The controls will hinder you a lot of the time, but the puzzles are still really good. So that's what I thought of this game. What do you think of it? Are you a fan of escape rooms? Are there any on the eShop you can recommend as now I have a bit of an appetite for them? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe and all that and really all I can say now is thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.